The great epic of Mahabharat spans many generations and dozens of kings. However, the king that started it all was Shantanu. He was the father of Bhishma and the grandfather of Dhritarashtra and Pandu. As a man who was not even supposed to be the king of the empire, to ending up being a king due to unusual circumstances and marrying a goddess, this video will narrate you the foundation of the great Mahabharat. Once there was a king named Mahabhisha born in the Ikshvaku dynasty. As a very powerful and righteous king, he had performed 1000 Ashwamedha Yagya which attained him a place in the heaven. One day, in the presence of Mahabhisha, all the Devas went to visit Lord Brahma. The goddess Ganga was also present amongst the gods. Mahabhisha and Ganga were attracted to each other and couldn't take their eyes off each other. Suddenly, there was a gust of wind that momentarily lifted Ganga's clothing. All the gods lowered their heads to avoid looking at Ganga, but Mahabhisha continued to look at her. Ganga noticed the king staring at her body and did nothing. Instead, she liked the attention. Angered by Mahabhisha's conduct, Brahma cursed Mahabhisha and Ganga to be born as humans on earth. Mahabhisha was then born as Shantanu to King Pratipa and his wife Sunanda, the rulers of the Kuru kingdom. Pratipa and Sunanda had three sons, Devapi, Balika and Shantanu. Devapi, despite being the eldest and virtuous, suffered leprosy. When Pratipa wanted Devapi to be the next king, the Brahmins objected due to his disease. Devapi, feeling disheartened, left to the forest for penance. Balika, the middle son, went to his maternal grandfather's kingdom, gained wealth and became a king there. Finally, Pratipa appointed his youngest son Shantanu as the king and he decided to retire to forest. Shantanu, now a beloved and skilled king, faced a severe problem when there was no rain in his kingdom for years. The Brahmins told him that the gods were displeased because he took the throne from his elder brother Devapi, who had leprosy. They suggested that Shantanu should give the kingdom back to Devapi for rain to return. Shantanu agreed and went to talk to Devapi, but a minister of his did not want Devapi as his king. The minister sent men to persuade Devapi to become unrighteous. When Shantanu and the Brahmins approached Devapi, he spoke against the Vedas. The Brahmin said Shantanu's rule was now justified since Devapi had become unrighteous. Shantanu listened to the Brahmins and returned to Hastinapur. Soon enough, Indra sent down torrents of rain in the Kuru kingdom and the farmers rejoiced. Shantanu enjoyed hunting in his free time. One day, he reached the banks of the river Ganga and saw a beautiful woman dressed in beautiful garments and divine jewelry. The beautiful woman was none other than Ganga in her human form. Shantanu fell in love with Ganga and proposed her for marriage. He offered her to be his wife and the queen of Hastinapur. Ganga agreed to be his wife but also put forth a condition. She demanded that Shantanu would never stop her from doing anything nor question her actions. If he did so, upon giving him an answer, she would leave him forever. Shantanu, smitten with love, willingly agreed and took her back to his palace. Soon, a son was born to them. King Shantanu and the people of Hastinapur were filled with immense joy. The next morning, Shantanu saw his wife Ganga carrying their newborn and walking towards the river. The king was confused to see the queen walk away with their child unaccompanied by anyone. So he decided to follow Ganga and soon witnessed the biggest shock of his life. Ganga drowned their child in the river, thus killing their firstborn. Shantanu was devastated 
but could not stop her or ask her for an explanation due to his promise. The gruesome event repeated when Ganga gave birth to the king's future children. Each time she would walk up to the river and drown her child and despite the king's grief, he could not step up and demand an explanation. The king had lost seven children the same way. The ministers of the king Shantanu started questioning him, worrying if he would ever have a successor to his throne. The whole kingdom began questioning the act of their queen, but Ganga remained unaffected. Finally, Ganga was pregnant for the eighth time. The day she delivered the boy, she walked up to the river with the same intention. The helpless king could not take it anymore. In his moment of weakness as a father, he broke his promise and stopped Ganga from drowning their eighth child and demanded an explanation for all the damage she had done. Ganga revealed that her and King Shantanu were living the mortal life on earth based on the curse of Brahma. She also told him that their eight children were the eight Vasus who were cursed by sage Vashishtha to be born as humans on earth. However, upon being pacified, the sage limited his curse and said that they would be freed from their curse upon their birth. So she released the seven newborns from their human lives by drowning them. However, Vasudhyos, who was now their eighth son, was cursed to live a long life. As promised, it was now time for Ganga to abandon the king. She took away their eighth child to bring him up well and train him for all the things he will have to deal with in his future. She named her son Devavrat, often referred to as Ganga Putra Bhishma or Bhishma Pitama in the Mahabharat. Years passed. One day, Shantanu looked at the banks of the river Ganga and noticed the waters of the river becoming shallow. As he wondered what was happening, he saw a young boy standing with his bow and arrow who had blocked the flow of the river Ganga. Suddenly, Ganga appeared before him with the young lad and handed over their eighth son, Devavrat, back to his father. Devavrat had obtained his knowledge of Vedas from sage Vashishtha and art of weaponry from Lord Parashuram himself. Shantanu accepted his son and returned home with the dreams of making Devavrat his crown prince and the future king of Hastinapur. Four years had passed. One day, while Shantanu was out hunting, he found himself on the banks of the river Yamuna. There, he spotted a beautiful woman named Satyavati. Intrigued, he approached her and asked her about the background and why she was there. She told him that she was a daughter of a boatman named Nishadraj and her name was Satyavati. Shantanu was immediately captivated by Satyavati and expressed his desire to marry her. However, she informed him that she needed to seek permission from her father first. Determined to make her his wife, Shantanu approached Nishadraj and asked for Satyavati's hand in marriage. Nishadraj agreed but on one condition. Only Satyavati's son could inherit the throne of Hastinapur. This condition saddened Shantanu because he had already chosen his son Devavrat as his successor. Back at the palace, Shantanu's sadness did not go unnoticed by Devavrat. Concerned for his father's well-being, Devavrat pressed him to share his troubles, but unable to confide in his son, Shantanu remained silent. Devavrat then sought help of the ministers to uncover the source of his father's sorrow. Upon learning the truth, Devavrat decided to take matters into his own hands. He approached Nishadraj and made a solemn promise. He said if Satyavati's son could inherit the throne, he would renounce his claim to the kingdom and remain a celibate or a brahmachari for life with his mother Ganga as a witness to his vow. Impressed by Devavrat's selflessness, Nishadraj agreed to the marriage. Shantanu happily accepted Satyavati as his wife and in honor of Devavrat's vow, 
he bestowed him with the name Bhishma. He gave Bhishma the boon of Ichhamrityu, which meant that Bhishma would die only when he chose to. Shantanu and Satyavati were married in a grand ceremony in Hastinapur. Satyavati then became the queen of the kingdom. They soon had a son named Chitrangad. He was extremely brave and valiant. They also had a second son named Vichitravirya, who became a mighty bowman. Devavrat, now known as Bhishma, upheld his vow of celibacy, ensuring that Satyavati's lineage would one day rule the kingdom. By this time, Shantanu was nearing the end of his lifetime. He wasn't very old, but he soon passed away and was cremated.